I'm not going to give out the phone number, but well, I have sent out emails. Okay, hello. go ahead, sir. Hello. Yes, what is, what's the question? The question regarding Canadian income tax. Uh, charitable donations. I have a small uh, business where I have a bit of a profit this year, and it's uh, just a proprietorship. I'm wondering if it's, is it more economical or advisable to make the donation through the company or pay myself first from the company and then make the donation? Well, this is an interesting question, Fred. What would you say? Well, let's get the question straight again. Well, he's got a proprietorship. He yeah. wants to know is he better off Not making a it? Yeah, is he better off making the donation through the proprietorship or himself? Same, same rate. Thing. It's exactly the same rate, sir. So it doesn't matter one so way or the other. It's not, it's not no, one bit different. No, not one big difference. But I've got to ask you a question. If you've got a proprietorship, do you have a mortgage on your house? Uh, yes. Is it deductible? Yes. You're deducting all the mortgage interest? Yes. 100% of it. Okay. Then making a charitable donation, uh, it doesn't matter whether you make it out of your own dollar or out of the company's dollar. Right. And uh, it's exactly the same donation for you. And remember, if you and your wife are making donations, you should both put you should put them together, and only apply them on one tax return. Yes. Yes. Uh, another question, David, if you have the time. Yes. Uh, I had, I had a, uh, a claim that uh, Revenue Canada rejected this year regarding uh, a deduction I used for investment advice. I belong to a. Uh, uh, subscription club where they send out <coughs> investment advice to invest in different securities. Yes. And they have a fee for that. So I deducted mm. that fee and Revenue Canada didn't allow it. Well, and, uh, just looking through some of the uh, websites <coughs> on, on the internet, and I'm, I'm of the impression that it should be allowed. Well, the question is a good one. and. Fred doesn't charge for advice, and I don't anymore. One time I was, as far as I know, the first advertising the yellow pages, fee for service financial counselor in Vancouver. And that was back in 71 or 72. We had to put the, get the yellow pages to uh, put a new classification in. Anyway, making a long story short, investment advice today, if you take a look at the way the act reads, if I remember right, it has to be for investment advice from somebody whose business is giving investment advice. And in the province of BC, they should be a licensed person as well. Am I correct on yeah. that, Fred? Okay. So if you are buying a subscription, then what you're doing is buying investment advice, but it's from a publisher rather than from an individual. And I've got to admit that I haven't seen uh, subscriptions turned down very often, they must have been looking at your tax return for something else as well, were they? Yeah. Yeah. So what they've done is they've just added it to the list because they were already looking at something else. You don't have a leg to stand on if it's for a subscription to a service. Right. Yeah, it was coupled with a query <clears throat> uh, uh, regarding my manual life income, not income plus, but manual life line of credit. <clears throat> where they break it out. Yeah. And, uh, I sent them a statement that I just uh, got off the internet, and they came back saying they needed some paperwork with my name on it. So yes. I had to end up getting statements for the whole year with my name on it. So this investment advice, <clears throat> I sent them copies of, uh, of some of the advice I get, and I haven't heard back yet, so they may very well accept it. It's one of these things that is not black and white, and it really depends on sort of the mood of the person at the time. Right. Uh, in my humble opinion, if you're subscribing to uh, to an investment newsletter of some sort, because some of them you can spend three thousand dollars a year. It's not a newsletter; they just send out bulletins to uh, to uh, explaining why you should buy certain securities and giving you a bunch of technical advice on it. And they make a recommendation of a buy price and a sell price. And a okay, price. well, and can I ask how much you pay for this? For the service is $1,000 a year. Okay, so it's a significant newsletter. And as I say, some of them are $3,000 a year. Right. 
Right. If that's the case and you're getting advice from somebody like, I'm going to say like Doug Casey, it doesn't have to be Doug Casey, but if that's what you're doing, my statement to you is that you should be able to claim that and they should allow it. Because right. now you're back into the position where he's paying for specific recommendations, and that's oh. part of what it says in the, in, the, uh, in the bulletin as well, that it has to be for specific advice for purchase or sale of specific shares. It doesn't say you have to buy those specific shares, but right. all right. Buy the advice. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good call. And thank you very much for calling. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks. All right. Bye. Take care. And that's a good question. Yeah, very good question. But that fellow who hopefully is still watching, uh, he should go down and see you and get himself a written financial plan because that's the kind of thing that you look at. It's free. Yeah, it's free. Oh okay. yeah.